I just want to say hello, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're calling from um, and welcome. So today's board chat um, is with my colleague, Hakeem Bawadi, who is a principal and senior project manager here at Walter P. Moore. And he is going to be talking on thermal loading on industrial steel frames. Hakeem, over to you. Thank you. Topic today is on thermal loading and how it is impacting the design of steel frames in industrial facilities. Uh, the thermal loading is primarily due to changes in temperatures through the use of the facility. Mill building tend to, to be very long and they tend to also support cranes that are used for the function of the building. They are formed by steel frame in most uh, situation and the steel like most material tend to expand and retract under variation of temperature. And these temperature, depending on the location, can vary in up to 50 degrees Fahrenheit or sometimes even more. So this expansion can result in few inches and needs to be considered in the design as it, uh, it introduces forces and impact the, the function. There are different guides and standards that are available to, to help the design professional for this situation. First is the AISE 13 by the Association of uh, Iron and Steel Engineer, which focuses on the mill uh, building design. And dependently of that, there is what's called Tech Report 15. It discusses the need for expansion joints and provide measured temperature at various locations. So if you have a building in say Houston or uh, Florida, you would know what kind of temperature expansion, what kind of temperature variation you would expect through the life of the building. And finally, there's the AISC design guide seven, which focuses on, uh, on, the, on design of uh, industrial buildings and provide step-by-step -step procedures while following the, 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 the building codes. If we look, if we do have a little bit in more the, into this uh, standard, the first one I'd like to speak about is the, the Design Guide 7. And as you can note in this uh, ex excerpt, it discusses the need to provide expansion joint in order to handle the vari variable temperature and the temperature range that the building will see through its lifetime. And uh, these joints are especially important if the, if the horizontal dimension of the building are very large, introducing quite significant forces into the frame. The technical uh, report number 65 is referenced here, just letting people know where to get the basic information in order to understand how the building can, ex, uh, can contract or can expand and through this expansion and contraction, what the design engineer needs to do. The AIC 13 also discusses the, the same behavior and, and has a particular note that uh, the braces should be placed midway between expansion joint. And we'll discuss that and, and why it's done. Braces are, of course, the element that take in the forces in the lateral direction, either these forces are wind or temperature, any building we need some form of bracing to resist those, those loads. Expanding on that, we, we understand that there are two major components when we take into account the expansion and the traction, tra expansion and uh, of a steel frame under thermal loading variation. One of them is the uh, the brace to resist the force. And the other is a joint, the joint so that when the frame extend, they can freely extend without bumping into one another. If they, if they bump, there is a possibility of uh, creating deformation as one beam pushes against another, they can deform or they can introduce large forces that were not expected which could be very significant in mill frame, are, are the, they are used for production and any kind of downtown 
results in a very large uh, economical cost due to the lack of manufacturing. So if we look a little bit into the bracing, what the bracing does is uh, you have these forces, the thermal forces shown here in green, which will then flow along the, the frame. And they go to the end and they are, res in this picture, they go to the end and they are resisted by the braces. By putting the braces at the end, which is an option, what happens is the frame cannot then expand freely at the ends. It is considered locked. And by locking it, uh, it has the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the inconvenience of introducing very large forces that are shown here in green. If we do the opposite and follow the guide, which says uh, it is better to put them in the middle, then we see that the frame can expand at the end, freeing the forces. If, essentially, if a frame, if a steel member can expand freely, the, it doesn't create locking forces that are large. If it doesn't expand freely, then uh, it introduces very large forces. But when it expands, of course, we have to think of the joints. When things are not designed properly, there are actually very severe consequences. This is a, a case where we look at the, the thermal loading trying to travel through the beams, but we had two problems in this particular situation in which the, uh, the joints were not large enough and the braces were at the end. So both conditions were there, unfortunately. And the actual steel member broke due to the to the large forces. This gives you an idea of how, how large those forces can be. We're talking about steel elements that are quarter inch thick. It requires quite large forces to break steel element in, in this fashion. It's totally separated. And all of that is caused by changes in temperature. So these changes in temperature had to be taken seriously in, in, uh, in design. Similarly, this is a picture at uh, two different time, taken at the, more or less at the same location of a frame. And we can see that at a certain time during the day, the joint was open, eventually it closed up, totally closed up, which is not a good idea. In the sense, once it closed up, it starts pushing against one another and introduces uh, very large forces. And again, when you have this situation, uh, the other unfortunate situation is, is uh, the building is no longer functional. The crane cannot properly move. And that has uh, very severe economical consequences when, when we have a shutdown. So if we look at the summary of this uh, discussion, is it's very important to consider thermal loads in your design. It's important to locate uh, the braces uh, properly, to evaluate the forces in all the member and to size the joint and the members properly. Uh, if, if these are not considered during construction, during the design rather, they will show up during construction and they do cause a very major economic loss. So I think, uh, thank you everyone for attending and that was my discussion on this topic. Thank you for that, Hakeem. That was really interesting. Certainly something that I've not thought about before. I did have a question um, to kick off the questions, if that's okay. You talked about mill buildings. So right. just so I can understand, what kind of building length, the size of the building, when does it become important to consider those temperature loads? Is it any building or is it a specific size of building? Yeah, yeah. based on uh, the thermal uh, changes that we see and the type of frame, generally we start at 400 feet, uh, okay. but we should start paying attention. Uh, less than that, possibly the, the, those forces are not large enough to, to start impacting the behavior of a building, but uh, 400 or maybe even 300 feet, it's important to start looking into that. Okay, great. That's good to know. We have another question in the chat. Um, someone is asking, can existing frames damaged by thermal loads, can they be repaired? Yes, they can, but it comes, of course, at a major cost, especially the downturn. Uh, the slide that I showed are from an actual building and eventually we repair that building. 
to repair it, we had to cut the braces from where they are, move them to the center, and we had to widen the joint, which is really difficult to cut very thick, thick steel plates. And when you do that, during that pr process, the, uh, the manufacturing has to stop and it comes at a very high oh, wow. cost. Okay. Not the construction itself, but it's the manufacturing that is truly, truly the cost here. Oh, okay. So I just wanted to let everybody else know, feel free to unmute yourselves um, and ask questions if you have any additional questions. Yeah, I have a question. Um, Hakeem, um, is the foundation design impacted by the thermal loads? Yes, they are. Uh, when you have very large uh, thermal loads, so they go through the brace and those braces will have then to be connected to footing, which has to resist that which also starts having an impact in a repair. If uh, in that uh, cases that I mentioned, once we start moving the frame to another location, the braces rather to another location, there was a need to try to do something for the foundation, which is another major cause in this case. Okay, great. Thank you. Do we so, have any, um, any other questions? I have a question. Um, specifically thinking about cranes, um, have you ever found that their function is impacted by the size of the joint? Yeah, they, they, uh, they could be, but in general, we can, um, there's some special uh, crane rail that will be able to span that joint. So even if we have reasonably a large joint, there's some uh, crane rail that will be put in that location that also will allow some kind of horizontal movement without, without uh, impacting overall function. Last call for any other questions. I don't see any other questions in the chat right now. So I think if there's no more questions, I think we'll start to, um, to wrap up. Please, everybody, if you can just be aware that Hakeem's contact information is in the chat box. So feel free to reach out to Hakeem with any further questions or any follow up. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for attending. Um, and just to let you know, I'll be back in a couple of weeks to talk with Jeff Cobis about major historical restoration project in Dallas. And then in July, Jacob Bice is going to teach us all about concrete. Same time, same place. So again, I'd like to thank everybody for attending. Thank you, Hakeem, for this. It was great and really informative. And we'll see you soon.